Even when I don't feel it's working 
Good morning, Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hill City Church. Welcome to our Church Anywhere groups happy meeting Valentine's all around Day. the place. And happy <laughs> Valentine's yeah. Day. Hey, a couple of weeks ago, Lauren and I put some questions out there on Instagram. Just said, hey, ask us some relational questions. And one genius individual said, can you give us your top five relational pieces of advice yes. for somebody who's newly engaged? And we kind of wanted to expand that today. So I want to open up to the Bible in, uh, in, in Ephesians chapter five, and let's look at this. I need to lay a groundwork. We're gonna be talking about this, but the most important thing I think in today's message is not actually the message itself, but the discussion that's gonna take place yeah. afterwards. And so we, we're praying healthy relationships with you and yeah. blessings upon you as we open up the word of God today. Yes. So let's look at this. In Ephesians chapter five, this is one of my favorite things. I read this almost every wedding that uh, I have the opportunity to officiate. Uh, I read this scripture. It's one of the most powerful relational scriptures, but I, I want you to know that all the all, every scripture, every point that we have to make today, we're gonna give you our top five. Every point that we have to make today is rallied around these sets yeah. of scripture. Now focus yeah. on this because we're going to focus on Christ and the church. Two things, Christ and the church. Listen to this. It says, uh, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. There's a message. Uh, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. There it is again, Christ in church his body and is himself its savior. Now the church, as the church submits to Christ, so also sh should wives submit in everything to their husbands. Now let me pause. We're not saying submit to me, woman. We're not doing that right now. We're not getting into that message. If you back it up to verse 21, it's mutual submission. We're gonna, we're gonna mutually submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's not the focus, but the focus is Christ and the church. And you can say it, you can whisper it, you can write it, Christ in the church. Yeah. Look how many times the Apostle Paul writes this. Uh, now, husbands, this is how we submit to our wives. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor. How many times do we see Christ in the church? And I just want to challenge you with this thought before we get into it, everything today, because everything that we're going to say revolves around this that what if your greatest expression of God's love to this world is not the Christian t-shirt that you wear to the gym, <laughs> it's not the third world country that you visited on yeah. a mission trip, it's not even the car that you purchased for a single mom, but what if the greatest expression of God's love to this world is in front of you every single wow. day in the way that you handle singleness, marriage, dating, wow and parenting. What if, what if, uh, as we talk about relationships, what if we reframe this, that as we talk about relationships today, we must always remember that they reflect something so much greater than our personal happiness, yeah. okay? This is what uh, the, the Apostle Paul said in, a, in Ephesians chapter five and verse 32, and I'm about to get to my first one, yep. so get pens ready and write this down. We're gonna today. have five quick, quick points. In verse 32 he said, this mystery is profound, and what I'm saying it is, is what, I'm sorry, this mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Every relationship that we have points to Christ and the church. So I'm going to point this out real quick. My number one piece of, of relational wisdom is that marriage isn't to make you happy, it's to make you holy. Marriage is not to make you happy, it's to make you holy. As the Apostle Paul writes this out, like he said, if you're single, you, you might be thinking, when I have this relationship in yeah. front of me, when, the, when I have all of yeah. these things in front of me, when I, when I have the right person in my life, when I do this, then I'm really gonna be happy. Have kids. The when goal have of yeah. relationships yeah. is not to make you happy, but to make you holy. Yeah. God wants to do a sanctifying work yeah. in you, and his main focus in us is to conform us into the likeness mm -hmm. of his son. Yeah. And what I've found is that God will often use relationships, friendships, he'll use dating relationships, marriages. Dating, if you do it right, by the way, uh, if you date correctly, God will actually use that dating relationship, even if it doesn't work out, to yeah. make you holy. Yeah. So relationships aren't to make you happy, relationships are, are, are to make you holy. So let's get into this today. Remember that, that's the premise of everything. That was point number one, that was our first piece of advice. Yes. Laura, what do you have to say? Okay, number two. Now there's a lot we could say about relationships. I feel like this could be like, we could sit here for days yeah. and talk about this and maybe there'll be more opportunity where we can really start to unravel some 
bigger things going on. So we're just gonna kind of hit the surface level today. Um, number two, okay, I want you to listen to this and write it down because it's really, really good wisdom. Are you ready yep. for it? In processing relationships or seasons of your life, whatever season you may find yourself in right now, whether you're single, whether you're dating, whether you're married, whether you have kids, whatever it is, listen to this. Hold closely to what God put in your heart, the desires that he's given you, the dreams that you have, the wishes, the wants, all that you have. Whatever God, hold closely to what God put in there, knowing that he is faithful, but hold loosely to how it'll all happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say that again. Hold closely to what God put in your heart, but hold loosely on how it'll happen. Sometimes we get so stuck on how everything's gonna happen, it's all gonna make sense, it's gonna be like this and this and this, and we plan everything out that we hold it on too tight and we miss what the very thing that God wants to do, okay? And now one thing I've learned is how important it is to trust God unconditionally. We know that God loves us unconditionally. And I believe that he's asking you to trust him unconditionally, not based on God, this is what I think, um, how the situation should work out. This is what my husband will look like. This is exactly, it's good to have a plan and hopes and dreams. As long as we don't hold on to that tighter than, than how much we trust God. Um, I remember whenever we, um, I remember whenever we were looking at houses and I thought, well, this must, you know, this must, must be the right house. Oh yeah, that it, here are all the signs pointing to it. And I held so tightly to what I thought it was that I was almost squeezing out what God, God was like, no, I have something better for you if you just trust me in the process. Yeah. And trusting God in every season is so important. Faith is trusting God in every season, even when things don't go your way, even when the relationship doesn't work out the way that you thought it would. It, you got to trust God in every season. Paul asked for God to take away a thorn in his side. Sometimes things, when things don't work out the way we want to, it becomes a thorn and we say, God, take this away. Why won't this go away? Or why won't this work out the way? But God says, Jesus says, his great, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfected in weakness. You may have heard that scripture over and over again, but you need to know that if a, re a relationship hasn't appeared to you yet, or you're not married yet in the timing that you thought that you would be. Just know that God's grace is sufficient for you in every season that you walk through, that his grace is sufficient. Hold closely to what God put in your heart, but hold loosely to exactly how it happened. You may need to be creative in your dating. You may need to do some online stuff. It may not be the way that you thought, but I, trust me that God has better for you than what you can imagine. That is so good. That's Number so three. good. Get it, girl. Let's, Let's keep on going. My thing that I've been thinking about a lot, and I hope that this encourages you. Now, this might be a little bit of a challenge to you, but you cannot ask for divine favor while simultaneously making decisions that go against God's revealed will. Okay? I'm going to say that again. Can I say that again? Yeah. You cannot ask for divine favor while simultaneously making decisions that go against God's revealed will. The relationship that you and I have with God is covenant. Let's uphold our end of the bargain. And just like Lauren said, let's trust God to uphold yes. his. The relationship that we have is covenant, right? Uh, I just want to ask you because at the beginning of the year, I do a prayer retreat and the Lord asked me specifically this. He said, Zach, do I have every part of you? Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I'm like, yeah, of course you have every part of me. But I knew there were, I knew there were areas in my life, even this year as a pastor of like, what, how many years have we been in ministry forever, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, having a great marriage, having great, you know, things, you know, somewhat together in my life, by no means am I a perfect person, but God still deals with my heart. You know, close to 20 years later after living with him, I don't have every part of you. And I want to ask you, does God have every single part of you? Living selfishly doesn't please God. Yeah. If we're going to hold everything. And it certainly doesn't help relationships. <laughs> no, it, it, it definitely doesn't. Yeah. But living perfectly doesn't please God either. Yeah. You know, and yeah. there's no such thing as perfection. We know that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, what, what pleases God, living by faith and trusting God. Do you, does God have every part of you? Do you like yeah. really trust God with every single part of you? It's it's really funny that like we think like we we have these these things, these areas where it's like, God, I trust you with 95% of my life, but this one yeah. area of my life, I'm yeah. just gonna hold it. Am I the only one who does that? You know, am I the only one who's been living for God for 20 years and and God still deals with to let things go and to 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 trust him in certain areas? I mean, seriously, this is why God is actually big 
on us living sacrificial lives yeah. of living for other people. Like our lives are not our own. And, and I'm going to get into that in a second. But first Thessalonians, let's talk about pleasing God real quick. First Thessalonians, it says, finally, then in, in verse one, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us, how you ought to walk and to please God. Come on, underline, please God. I love this. Yes. Please God. Underline that. What, how does, how, what does the Bible say? How, how do we please God? The Bible says in, in, in Hebrews 11 that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the one way to please God isn't through perfection. Yeah. You know, it, 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 isn't, it certainly isn't through selfishness. Yeah. But the one way to please God is through faith. Now, tie that in with the, the scripture that some of you tied around your finger when you went to silver ring thing back in the day. Think about this. We're instructing you how to walk and please God, just as you're doing, that you do more so and, e and even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in passionate lust like the, the Gentiles who do not know God that no one transgress, transgress and wrong his brother in this matter. See, when the Bible teaches that when we're, when we're sexually immoral, we're not just sinning against God, we're sinning against our brother, yeah. okay? Yeah. So you cannot ask for a divine favor while simultaneously making the choice to go against God's will. There is a desire in our heart, as we read Ephesians chapter 5, that we do relationships different than the world does relationships. Yes. We shouldn't look at these things the same. We shouldn't handle yeah. conflict the same. We shouldn't handle living together the same. We shouldn't handle the way that we, yeah. we interact with each other the Come same. On. It should be different. It should yeah. be held to a higher standard because your standard of relationship is, re is revealing to the world God's standard for you. Yes. So you cannot ask for divine favor without, with, with, while simultaneously making decisions that go against God's revealed will. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean there's not grace or there's not love there, but it just means that, yes, the way that we handle things should look different yes. than the world because we we have all the answers, like literally right Ooh, here. Yeah. Like this is the relationship guide right here. Anytime you need help, it's right here. And let me just be real about this, okay? Let me be like, yeah. like Lauren and I, we dated for four and a half years before we got married. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, she's attractive to me now. She's more attractive to me than she was right now than she was back then, but... I it was, was attracted hard to work. her. It was you know, hard work. Yeah. You know what kept us sexually pure though? Was faith. It was yeah. trusting God. It was yes. knowing that God had something better for us on the other yes. side. Yeah. And just, I was sharing with one of our staff members, Chris, who's amazing. I love Chris. He's right here. What's up, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so we were just sharing about how marriage gets better and better when you yes. do things God's way. It's yes. a level of trust. And I want to ask you, does it God have, trust. does God have right. every part of you? Now, yes. Transitioning into that, is, I'm going to take the fourth one too because it was just so so one in the Can same. Can I say something real Please quick, Zach, on ahead. top of that? That you're worthy of something good. That you're worthy of a weight. You're worthy of yeah. a moment. You know, when you do things God's way, it is way better. When we follow what the Word says, it's in there for a reason. It is way better than what we... And I love what you said, Zach. It does come down to unconditional trust. Yes. Our purity... How we handle relationships. That's life. It's it all about trust. Yes. Crazy. Yes. Okay, go to number four. Trust and receiving love. Are we going to receive love from God you're or am I going to fill my own it. needs in this? Yes, I mean, we got a lot to say it. about this. Maybe we should talk about it again I know, soon. We will. The fourth one, and it ties directly in with the third, is that nothing that we own, quote unquote, nothing that we own was ever ours anyhow. <laughs> Nothing that we own yeah. was ever ours anyhow. I was reading C.S. Lewis. This is one of my favorite books, Screw Tape Letters. It takes a couple chapters to start to get to the use of the way that it, <laughs> I, read, I, I read it, it to her at night. <laughs> Listen, this is a book about temptation, about how the enemy works, and I'm reading it to Lauren at night. I'm kind of glad she fell asleep every it was night great to when I was reading it to her. To. But so we have a senior demon writing. It's obviously an allegory. Writing a senior demon writing to a junior demon, teaching him how to tempt and what to focus on to pull a believer away from the things of God. And I thought this line was wow. so powerful. Uh, the senior demon writes, the sense of ownership in general is always to be encouraged. The humans are always putting up claims to ownership, which sound equally funny in heaven and hell, and we must keep them doing so. Much of the modern resistance to chastity comes from men's belief that they own their bodies. First Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. You are not your own. You were bought with a yes. price. Therefore, yes. honor God with your bodies. Yes. Right? It's our bodies, but we were purchased yes. by Christ. And our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So remember that. Number four was nothing we own, quote unquote, was ever ours anyhow. Nothing we own was ever ours anyhow. But you know, this becomes a challenge for people that I've talked to a lot of people lately that they're just having a hard time going on dates or finding anybody to even go on dates with or, you know, I'm, I'm this old and I haven't, I haven't been able to experience any dating or, you know, anything at all. Just know that you were bought with a price, that God's grace is sufficient for you in this season, that when we unconditionally trust God with our future, he knows what's best and the Holy Spirit is the best teacher and the guide and the helper and he will give you ideas and yep. thoughts to help lead you down this. There's but a I lot of really that. great resources about yes. that and maybe somehow we can creatively get some of those resources yeah. out there. And we're honestly trusting our Church Anywhere groups today yeah. to begin to resource the people around the table, yeah. around your table, right where they are. So we understand that some groups have a lot more singles and some groups have a lot more parents yeah. and some groups have a lot of, of mix in between. We're leaving it up to the Church Anywhere groups to resource uh, our, the people And there's so today. many good resources out there right now. There's so many good. So we'll either try yeah. to link them or send them out or get you guys some Absolutely. good resources. Absolutely. But I love Come that. Get to Nothing five, we girl. have is, our, is ours anyhow. You were bought with a price. You are worthy yep. to receive love and to give love. I love that. Number five um, is a goal in any relationship should never be perfection yeah. or completion. We said this last night on our live, but I think it's something that's really good or yes. the other night <laughs> on our live. I think it's something that's worth repeating. When we go into any relationship thinking that this person, and we're encouraging you to date, like go on dates, like it's okay. As long as you do things God's way, it's not going to hurt. But any goal that we have in life or any goal in a relationship should never be perfection or completion. This relationship and you kind of talked about the beginning is going to complete me when i get married i will feel complete when i have kids i'll feel complete when i finally step into my calling i'll feel complete you can fill in the blank we do it all the time it's so natural as humans to do that to fill in the blank or completion once i get married i'll be complete god wants you to know that completion and perfection is found in your relationship with him so God made you for relationships okay he created you to be in relationship with other people we need people we are created for people for sure but the best way to steward and honor relationships that we have the best way that I can steward my marriage the best way that I can steward my relationships outside of marriage is to be in relationship and communication with God, allow God to fill us up first and then let others in. And that is really hard. Practically, Lauren, how do you do that? Well, I read the word. I try to write in my journal. I try to connect with my heavenly father first, knowing yeah. that in him is full completeness. The word of God says it. There is completeness in him first. Whenever I find that, it's easier for me to give out a place of completeness rather than trying to get other people to fill the needs that only God can fill. There yes. are needs inside of you that only the creator of the heavens and earth can fill in you. And so people will make us happy. People will bring us like fulfillment and love and we need that. But when it gets unhealthy when we're constantly looking for others to fill a need that only God can. And we become dependent on others to say things the right yeah. way or do things the right way in order to fill us up. And instead of a lot, and sometimes we get that flip flop. So whatever season you're in, I know it's tough. I know every season is tough. Every season brings difficulty. It brings difficulty. Every season is, you know, right now we've got the ups and yes. downs going on. You know, yes. like just, just leaning into that a little bit. It is you have that. so much joy, yet yes. so much frustration. There are so many parents that I'm connecting with right now who are like, I've never spent so much time with my kids. This has been amazing. And in the same sentence, they'll be like, but they're driving me nuts. Yes. You know? So it's there are ups life. and downs and that to embrace negative in relationship is real life. And I love that. And Lord, I, if yes. I can read the scripture, Please this do. has been so on my heart. In Colossians 2, 9, 10, this, the apostle Paul wrote, for in him, the whole fullness of deity yes. dwells bodily. This is called in Christ. The whole, the full is the fullness of God. And you have been filled in him. 
who's the head of all rule and authority. Yeah. Like you're filled in yes. Christ and Christ alone. Another version of this says you are complete in him. And a lot of times the reason that we mess up relationally or that we make mistakes even in life, we, we take things into our own hands because we're convinced that we're not filled. We're convinced that we're not made complete. We're convinced that like if I have this, then that is going to bring that it's completion. Like the, the number one lie the enemy tries to like trick us with. Yes. Ah, it's yes. so true. It's so true because yes. he wants to. T he wants to say, Christ isn't enough. Yeah. What you have isn't yeah. enough. I promise you, you'll never be good enough. You'll never be good looking enough. You'll never be smart enough. You'll never be. You'll never measure up to this to the standards that you have in your head and the enemy has about you. But you in Christ are complete and yes. filled. God's pleased with you. Yes. He loves you. He wants a, a deep yes. relationship with you that fulfills your heart. And out of that relationship, this is where it is with Christ in the church. How can we love? Our wife, how can I love my wife if I first haven't received his love for me yes. and have a revelation of that? And if you get a hold of that re revelation, it'll change your life. And right now, if you're single and you're processing like what your marriage is going to be like someday, the best thing that you can do, yep. the best thing that you can do is, is learn to receive the love of God. Let that love fill you. And then your relationship is going to be better. Yes, right? because you're going to be quick to forgive. You're going to be slow to anger. You're going to love out of a place of wholeness, not brokenness, where you're constantly yeah. trying to fill that. Yes, it's so much. Right. So... I had this picture in my head, and I hope this makes enough. sense. Like sometimes, what makes sense in my head might not make sense in everybody sure, else's. But I saw this cartoon once where a gentleman got his hand stuck in a vending machine. Okay, <laughs> and there are police officers and everybody trying to get him around, oh, no. trying to get him out, and his hand stuck in the vending machine. He was trying to take a candy bar. Okay, <laughs> they said, <laughs> "Is that something you did in your okay, life?" Okay, <laughs> this is true. No, maybe. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe, maybe. I thought about it. That's for sure. But he had his hand in the in the vending machine. He's holding onto a candy bar, and his hand stuck in the in the vending machine Aww. and they said hey why don't you just let go of the candy bar and he's like oh <laughs> let go of the candy bar and gets his hand out oh, it was wow. a cartoon fake story you know yeah. but, but this is what i think of when i when it comes to needing fulfillment by anything else like sometimes we just gotta let go of the candy bar yeah like it's that simple like okay god i'm gonna trust you i'm gonna i'm gonna release this area of my life and i'm really going to put my trust in you does christ have all of you does Christ have every, every part of you? It's so funny because like as we are still in a season of fasting and prayer, God continually deals with my heart. It, you know, we're called to live sacrificial lives. We're called to let go, to live at a deficit mm -hmm. in order to trust God to fill in the rest. Yeah. That's what fasting does. Yeah. That's what giving does. That's what, that's what waiting and, and appropriately does. We're, we're living at a deficit, trusting for God, God to fill in the gaps. Yep. And I'm telling you, he's going to fulfill the promises that yes, he's given to you. He the desires in your heart yes. are there because God created you. Yes. He formed you and yes. he knew you and he has yes. a, a divine purpose for you. Yes. But the problem is when we want to put our arm in the vending machine yep. and hold that candy bar, that's when we start to mess stuff up. It's time to just let that go. Yep. Does God have every hold part of you? Hold loosely to how it'll happen. <laughs> I mean, all of these five points are going hand in hand. Yep. It was almost like we planned this. It was, yeah. You know? <laughs> it, they just like all just kind of work together. Yep. It worked great. Absolutely. So here, I'm going to ask you today, okay? Yep. If you you don't know Christ, yes. you can have fulfillment in Christ. It's so like it starts, you. it starts here. This is a relationship yeah. above every relationship. So the Bible says in Romans that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the, the dead and you confess with your mouth yes. that he's risen from the dead, yeah. you'll be saved. Yeah. I mean, it is that simple to come into a relationship with God, but you have to open up your heart to relationships with other people. Yeah. So today in our church anywhere groups, this is where I think the power is going to take place. Yes. I simply want us to talk about you know, which of the top five really spoke to you? Yeah. And maybe what's one area in your relational life where you just need to open up your hand and yeah. let go of the candy bar, okay? Yeah, so it could so be good. with your parent. It could be with your grandparents. It could be with a boss or with someone. There's a relationship in your life where you just need to open up and trust God. Anywhere group leaders, we're, we're trusting you to minister and to pray to, uh, to your groups today in a way that reaches them where they are. Uh, I love you guys. Yes, Thank you so much for joining us. Anything before we go today? Nope. We're just believing God with you that he fulfills his promises as you begin to unconditionally trust 
God yes. and his love for you. Yes. So we will see you all on Zoom next week. We have Zoom Church. Cannot wait for that. It's going to be so great to see your faces in person. And then we're meeting in person the week after that. Great things ahead. Let me pray for you, Lord. Let's pray. I'll pray yes. for relationships and then uh, we'll let you guys go. Thank you, Father, for this yes. amazing group of people who are online watching today, gathered in living rooms and kitchens and in their homes, maybe even alone, maybe uh, listening while they're driving. God, I just ask that you bless every relationship. Yes. Lord, today we purposefully uh, make a decision in our heart to trust you with every relationship, with it, in our singleness, in our dating, in our waiting, in our parenting, in our marriages, and God, ever in our friendships, Lord, I pray that we can be the best friends in the world and it appoints people to Jesus. So God, we bless everybody today and thank you for our time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. amen. All right, we'll Love see you guys, guys. next see week. Ya. Love you.